Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chris Rydell, actor and now podcast host, I guess. Um, that guy you've seen on a million TV shows and movies, but you still do not know my name. And I'm David Allen Bache, actor and sometimes producer. And you also recognize me from lots of films and TV shows, but you probably couldn't name one of them right now if I paid you to. The two of us and our guests are going to let you in on some secrets on how to make it as an actor and share some private stories from the many movies and TV shows that we've worked on. That's right. We're going to interview a special guest each week, and we'll get their best advice and wisdom for you about how to break into this business and how to stay in it. And yes, again, there will be stories, stories, stories. So let's get to it. This is Confessions of a Working Actor. Chris, I have a confession to make this week. Okay. I'm, re I'm recording from the bathroom. Ooh. Yeah, it's not a, a sounds a, good. Yeah, it's not like a IBS issue or anything like that. I'm just uh, there's a lot going on in my household. You know, my wife is also a working actor, and she's got these pitch meetings, and so I have uh, self exiled to the bathroom. So okay, well, no sometimes flushing. Sometimes that's where we the, belong. Yeah, no flushing during the podcast, but uh, really, we're very professional here at Confessions of a Working Actor. Um, clearly, the most professional thing about us today will be our guest, but. You know, we do what we can, right? We're doing our best. And we're artists, and so we make stuff up. Like, we do what we have to do to, to get it done. Well, as a child, I remember running to the bathroom to hide, you know? Ah. So maybe we just never grow up. That's it. Maybe this is a safe space for me, and I didn't even know it. Um, <laughs> this week, moving on, see how it was not a good segue. This week, uh, we're going to talk to a wonderful actor. And and I think and I don't use this phrase lightly, a comedy genius. And I really mean that she's been on lots of shows that you know, yes, of course, like Parks and Rec and New Girl, Transparent, Kevin Can Wait, whole lot of stuff. And she plays Jane Bales, right? On the comedy yeah. the Goldberg. Oh, right. That's right on the Goldbergs. Right. She's the yeah. lead of hilariously absurd comedy the medical police. <laughs> It makes me laugh just and, thinking about and it. And obviously much more. Yes. Uh, like, for example, uh, I think it was, I don't know, almost almost 70 episodes uh, of Children's Hospital. Dr. Spratt. She's fantastic. So why don't we, why don't we um, introduce her? Let's welcome Emmy nominee, Erin Hayes. Hi. Welcome. welcome. Hi, guys. And I'm in my closet with all my shirts. It looks That's really fantastic. nice, actually. Very you see colorful. That? People could see. If you could see this beautiful actor <laughs> in her in her closet, which is smart, by the way, because all the clothing dampens the sound, so that's a place to have a mic if you if you need to do it. Um, I was just telling Chris, Aaron, that I'm recording from my bathroom this week. Please don't take that Aww. in any way as a referendum on Aaron Hayes. Yeah, no, no, no. And you don't take my uh, <laughs> my closet as that I need to hide from you guys. No, we absolutely will not. Um, I would love to jump in and just talk quickly. Um, we usually ask about uh, our, our guests humble beginnings, which we will get to but you've been busy lately. And I just want to talk about what's happening right now. Um, most uh, exciting to me is uh, a Christmas story Christmas with an, yes. uh, the film with a with an all grown up Ralphie from a Christmas all story. All grown up Ralphie. Yeah, How it's streaming cool is now that? on HBO Max. It's really I mean, I'm like over the moon about it. It's streaming now on HBO Max. I am so proud of it. It was such a lovely set. It was such a great family. They they brought us in and this doesn't happen often. You guys will know this. Like they brought us we shot it in Bulgaria and they brought us over there three weeks early and we rehearsed as a family, all the wow. family scenes oh. for two, two and a half weeks. You never get rehearsal so that, on a film. You never get rehearsal on a film. So to walk in on day one of shooting and already feel like I knew the kids, I mm. knew my husband, we had, uh, we had been to dinners together. We had been on like a little day outing. You know, like, especially with little kids, you want to feel as the mom that you can like pick them up or ruffle their hair or like correct their posture or do something <laughs> like have a little shorthand with yeah. them as actors. Yeah, God is in the details. A scene. Yeah, especially for, I don't know, I'm so close to my mom and my own kids. Like we touch each other all the time. I'm like, mm. I want them to be comfortable with me like, 
holding their hand or fixing their hair or all that kind of stuff. Mm. It was really beautiful. And I'm so proud of the, um, the final product. It's so like sweet and charming and funny. And I think it's, I read a great review. Oh, good. It was just timely and we need sort of a, a sweetness and a nostalgia and it's not sappy. It, it just was heartwarming and I read a great review. So I'm thrilled oh, for you. Oh, good. Yeah, I hope lots of people watch it. And having, we have all the original kids in the cast mm. as grown ups. And Peter Billingsley, who is Ralphie, yeah. took such care with the tone and just making sure that it lived very much in that world and mm. didn't, wasn't number one, a retread or didn't lean too much into, you know, that there's that Christmas thing of, of certain movies of like the dad just doing wild and wacky crazy stuff and everybody else looks on like what are you doing now <laughs> um that it didn't lean too much into that kind of territory so i don't know i'm so excited i'm glad that everyone can now see it so streaming now on hbo max yes fantastic Good. um i saw a re another uh not direct competition but another christmas movie on hbo max it's coming out now um and i uh, my wife and i got to see a premiere of it and it's a documentary and it's called Santa Ooh. Camp. So, Ooh. so Santa Camp, and it literally is about camp in New Hampshire, I think, in the summer. And and like you go there to be Santa to learn how to be Santa. Um, which That's would be, amazing. Yeah, which would be cool enough, but it gets better when you realize that this is the first year they've had a black Santa, a trans Santa, and a Santa who has spinal bifida, so differently abled Santa. Oh wow! And it's all about sort of opening up that community to people that don't look traditionally like what white America thinks Santa is. And it was fantastic. Well, that's really beautiful. So HBO Max is clearly killing it. That's fantastic. How did you get started in this crazy business? We, we need to know that. Um, well, I mean, I was a theater kid at a young age, kind of was, you know, always the peanut gallery little class clown -y kind of thing um so that got funneled into theater all throughout growing up did a lot of like musicals and things like that and then went and got a degree at the university of colorado and studied acting there um and then that i made the choice because i'm from san francisco and you have to hate los angeles if you're from san francisco it's like a thing uh -huh. los angeles loves san francisco san francisco hates los angeles so I moved back to San Francisco because it had more integrity <laughs> and was miserable and then moved down to LA where my boyfriend, now husband, was living and was like, oh, you mean this is where they keep the work? Um, started doing some commercials and literally, I think I've hit most of the rungs on the ladder. Like I, I, there wasn't many times where I skipped one. Like I went from one line on something or other to two lines on something to a you know a co-star to a guest star to living in that land for a long time to little tiny movies to big uh i've stepped on them all so very happy for the current mm. rung i'm at um mm. yeah that was kind of that's my start good good did a little um pilot called playdates never got picked up oh like, wait wank. a minute now <laughs> That, that wouldn't be the 2005 Playdates pilot directed by Ted Wass, would it? Yeah, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, be. you were involved in that. I, right, think, we, yes. I think we both I were. Think we may have been TV married. Perhaps point, as David. husband and wife. That's right. Perhaps. I'm honored <laughs> to say that I was able to be married to you at some point. Me even, too. Uh, right back at TV. you. You're a TV catch, I got to tell you. Oh, oh, thanks. You too, buddy. So keep 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 telling keep telling yeah. us. So you you moved down you moved down to LA is where it happened for you. Yeah, yeah. I moved down to LA, and it's funny because now I don't know if you guys have like when people go like, "How should I do it? How should my kid get started? What should mm. I do to get in?" And I'm like, it's a different world. I mean, I literally sat in a hallway at a commercial audition, met somebody that said, "Oh, you should come." talk to my agent and just help out and like maybe she'll take you on but there were like I didn't have a cell phone I didn't have a website I didn't wasn't creating content on YouTube it was like I had this teeny tiny little agent I secretly got the um breakdowns oh, and yeah. I would submit myself 
right. for things, I which that now one. I'm like, yeah, right. Like certain times I would like literally drive around town and drive my, and drop my headshot headshot off at casting director's offices when I knew there was something going on. And then this one thing that I had submitted myself for on the now defunct PAX network, um, I almost got, I was like held for weeks and weeks for this um, Three Musketeers show. Hmm. And the, I didn't get it, but the casting director, Shana Goldsberg, kind of took me under oh, her I wing remember. and was like, I remember Shana, yeah. yeah, yeah, she was so great. She used to have these, did you ever go to one of her soup parties? She would have actors over yes. to the house, make a bunch of soup. You yes. went to one? It was yeah. literally what? a soup party, yeah. It yeah, was a soup it was party. A, yeah, yeah. And it was like a bunch at, of actors. At her, at her house. Yeah. At her, house. at her house she helped me find the manager i have now and then at one of these soup parties i'm sitting at the time i was working doing improv shows at california adventure you know the classic soap opera improv uh at a theme park and me and my boyfriend now husband were talking to this guy and he was asking about this job and i think i was being really animated and i was just like being myself and then later I learned that that was Tony Sepulveda, who is the big Warner Brothers <laughs> casting. Tony, and yeah. he happened to be casting a show that involved improv at that moment that they needed to recast somebody. And I went in and got that job. And I truly do think if I had known who he was, I would have been the weirdest version of myself mm. and never been brought into there. Cause I would have been like performing for him and like trying to get that job. So that was like my first big job called on the spot that's it was on the wb with the frog ribbit well besides besides going to uh soup parties right because obviously <laughs> that, wink, wink. that was uh, something very important <laughs> no, um, it really was soup i swear what what was something that you felt that you did right then or maybe even that you did wrong when you first started that you maybe want was share with um, some of our listeners? Well, what I did right, which through Shana Landsberg, did I say her name right the first time? Shana Landsberg, not Shana Goldsberg. I know um, Shana that. Landsberg. Uh, she hooked me up with a meeting with a manager, a few different managers, trying to find me better representation. And I said, and what I did right was I went with the person that I had the best personal connection with not the person that I thought had the most credits had the people that I wanted careers like or whatever the person that I felt like really got me mm. like he was like mm -hmm. oh my god I love you and I was like I love you and he was like I haven't even seen you do anything let's work together and he's still my manager now wow um and he's really good because he believes in me and like we genuinely like each other so he that was the thing I did well was like, trust my gut with a mm. personal connection for somebody that is going to then have to try to sell you all around town. Cause I made that mistake with agents where I was just like, well, I've got to be at this Gotta big be agency the fancy, because the fancy place. Right. Right. Yeah. And then you slowly realize that you have to maybe kill 17 other actresses uh, for your own agent to push you like I don't want to have to kill right. June Diane Raphael she's wonderful but right. my, ah. it was like the thing where my agent was going to push her every time over me like right. and I'll give her every part but um, I'm, I'd love some of them <laughs> that's well these personal relationships are really important yeah. I was going to say they are. That, and now that, I'm back you know having that connection is so yeah, important now, going going to your agent showing up sh you know like when you end up at a big agency, you got to realize that there's other agents that are showing up with other talent that they're bringing with them. And if you're not over there shaking hands and introducing yourself, mm. you end up being just a picture on a computer, you know. And yeah. these and days, I'm not especially, a big schmoozer. Yeah. you're what? Not know. a big I, schmoozer? I hate, right. I don't like talking to people because I should talk to people. I, I don't. So now I'm back at a like smaller agency than the huge fancy agency while still being a very good agency and with innovative and they're fantastic and the best thing about mm -hmm. it is like i love the people that are representing me at this moment i can call them they pick up the phone they call me back we talk about others you know we talk about other stuff we talk about my career whatever and i know that they're like genuinely pushing for me out there 
we talk a, a lot about agents and managers and things on the podcast. And um, I think you brought up a, a like 50% of, of the important balance in, the, in that relationship, which is you have to trust your gut about um, a, an agent or a manager's personality. And it's okay if they're, if they're an agent and they're a little a bit of a go-getter or they're a little cutthroat or they're a little intense. Like and if, you, if you can handle that and you can picture that working with when they're pitching you, great. And you want them to see you. Uh, Chris's point, I think, is very good, which is out of sight, out of mind, and especially these days with mm -hmm. self-tapes, you know. It's like go into the office, stop by. It's, you know, COVID is, is uh, passing us by these days. So like go stop by, say hello, bring a gift, whatever, like out of sight, out of mind. And, and even if we don't love to schmooze with agents and managers, we at least want to have a conversation and feel like we can be friendly. Um, the other half of that relationship, I think, is you are the CEO of your business. And you are 100% allowed to tell agents, I, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. This is the path I want to follow. Um, that's something we that, will, that won't move the needle for us right now. Like, I read that script. I don't like it. And the character is demeaning and I'm not gonna play that part again. I wanna move past it. Um, did you follow up with that particular casting person after that great audition? Like you told me that was a great audition and a great tape I sent you. So did you call them? Not email, did you call them? Like we are the CEOs, it's not show show, it's show business. And I have a manager who I, I do that with and we've gone out and had a scotch and a cigar. And I trust that he is a nice guy and we're very friendly. So I think there's a real balance to be had. Um, it's both of those things. It's just what you were saying about trust your gut about the person's personality and who you connect with personally. Um, and it's then be confident that you, you're allowed to say, hey, this is my career. And I will listen to your professional advice and I, I want everything you're going to give me. But I also am allowed to say, this is a direction I want to go in. Absolutely. And if you're picking your people and you have both, mm. whoever you have, like if you have an agent and you're picking a new manager or vice versa, make sure that the person you already have wants, works well with that other person. Because if they can't get your agent, if your manager can't get your agent on the phone, then what's the point of having, uh -huh. of signing with that agent? You need mm -hmm. your manager and your agent to have a good relationship together. Another good uh, point. Yeah, that Aaron, was like, Aaron, you were mentioning yeah. that you didn't uh, that you felt that self promotion wasn't something that you felt comfortable with, you know, that maybe it's not easy for you to make that call that you don't have to make or, or how do you how do you how do you get past that? How does some how does an actor? You know, I don't it. know, how do you make that? How do you get how do you get out of your own way was is my question. I... <laughs> it's hard because I think I do get in my own way for periods of time and then a lot of it is like literally just and then I <laughs> and then I make long to-do lists during the day and just make myself cross off everyone start with two easy ones do the three hard ones end with the two end with the two easy ones um and start with the easy phone call first you know start with the person mm -hmm. you have the genuine connection with first or whatever and then go into the build yourself up a little bit before you go into the harder ones. Um, I am a big fan of emailing people just to be like, Hey, how's Hollywood? What's going on? Anybody, um, anybody, anybody looking for what I'm selling? Uh, just a quick touch in just to, even if you know, the answer is going to be, we are looking at everything. Right. We are working so hard for you. I think it's I that, that little answer. slight reminder of, um, Okay, well, here I am. So, like, put it, move it to the top yeah. of your list um, without I, saying, please yeah. move me to the top of your list. I text my manager every Monday. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, and he and he was like, you know, I want you to keep in touch with me more. And I said, great. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to send you a text every Monday. And Monday is, is dab day. Monday is David Allen Beige day. So he gets oh, a good. text every Monday, not at the same time. Like, I mix it up a little bit, you know, a little different emojis, whatever. Um, and it's, you know, happy dab day. Like what's on the slate for this week? Did you have the staff meeting yet? Did my name come up about what projects? Like, what are you thinking of? Right. And I, I, he told me to ask. So I ask and it's been great so far. I, I do feel a connection there that, that just that text, sometimes the texts don't get answered until the end of the day. That's okay. And then it's usually like, sorry, I was X, Y, Z, but I'm thinking of you and thanks, you know? So yeah, that constant communication is a really, really good idea.
Yeah, I know my agency has their uh their big meetings on Wednesdays where they go over mm. all the projects and stuff. So usually it's like, all right, should we talk later today? Although yeah. it's starting to mess with me because it used to be, I don't know if you have this, having both the manager and the agent, bad news phone calls would always be just my managers. Good news phone calls oh, would be oh, like, then you get the well, group holding for, you get the group. Yeah. Oh yeah. But now, <laughs> but I think now that I have more in Uh-oh. like they're, involved they're, agents, they're, they're psyching you out. Group phone call, they're doing group phone calls just for like a state of the union. No, and that's and when I'm you like think you got the I'm job. An no, offer. no. When when it's like, oh, please, please hold for Mark, and we're we're getting uh, yeah. Sean on the Ooh, line. We're getting and Sean and we're Jake. We're getting all the rest like, of the day. I'm like, oh, I, either <laughs> you're dropping me, or I could book that job. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so man. So now I'm like all excited for an offer or something, and I'm like, oh, oh, you're working hard for me. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. So much. <laughs> Aaron, what's something you you wish you had known when you started this business that you know now? I mean, this is probably a little more specific to actresses, but like, okay. hey, hey, guess what? Hey, guess what? Those two to three pounds that you're stressing yourself out about before you work don't matter. Mm. Like, I like I just how hard I have been on myself as I was like, oh, I had to have this. I have to have my hair right or I got to get a I have to look exactly perfect before I do this thing up to these whatever Hollywood standards. And then I watch projects and I don't remember which ones I did that for and which ones I didn't because nobody else cares. It's the same thing I say to my daughters. Like, nobody gives a fuck if your bangs are perfect today except you. Like, let's just be a little easier on ourselves um, in general. You know, when I stress out really hard about looking really good for whatever red carpet thing and then the only pictures I like are the ones when I'm genuinely smiling Mm. (laughs) it's like just uh, live your life and be happy and this all of these things that you think are gonna that have to be perfect don't have to be perfect that might be a life lesson too that might not just be it is a life (laughs) lesson it is a life lesson but we 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 appreciate that it's a great appreciate that here and, you know, to be fair, it is a, a weight and appearance, age, uh, all that stuff does, I think, is so much harder on women in this business. Absolutely undeniable. Anybody who tells you that it's not, I think, is just full of shit. It's, I've watched my wife be a victim of sexism, misogyny, ageism. It's so, so hard for women. And, you know, with men, it's like, well, I, I kind of wish that my, my beard were a little grayer. And like my hair is starting to get gray and I'm like, well, could it go faster? Then maybe I get that part that John Slattery got. Like I want the full gray, like what? And, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a fucking luxury. I mean, it's so hard for women and having a teenage daughter, I am hyper aware of, we don't comment on her body. We don't comment on her appearance. Yes. If she picks out a dress that she's agonized over, we are sure to say like, that's a great choice. You look, how do you feel? You look great. You know, but it's yeah. a life, that's a life lesson. That, and, and even more than appearance, um, we've also heard people say on, uh, right here, um, not in this bathroom, right here on this podcast, <laughs> right here on this podcast, um, you know, you can't try to be the perfect version of what you think casting people or producers or directors want you to be. You, you really, the success comes most when you're your own genuine self, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And those are the most interesting people to watch, too, who are not un god what's the word they're not criticizing themselves as they're doing it what mm-hmm. is what god, they're not what self, word they're, not self I mean? they're not self-conscious they're not unselfconscious they're yes un- unselfconscious right right like i watched um i was shadowing the director on the connors last week and oh, good, i got good. to like I mean, Laurie Metcalf is like a perfect example of this. Mm. Like she's the most unselfconscious performer I've ever seen. Close. I mean, she is so fully in each moment and in listening and reacting that all the things we were taught about like acting for the camera, about how it's smaller and more intense. Like, no, it's not. It's If it's grounded and comes from a real place, you can be huge. Mm. And that is beautiful. And if it's committed, like she is in every moment and everything she ever does. Um, it's so unselfconscious, yeah. like it's, and which is beautiful. You, you know, you were, I want to just give a shout out um, to a, I, I love everything you do, but I have to tell you that, that I think one of the, one of the 
best pieces of work you've ever done. Um, and uh, pardon the New York City sirens in the background. They 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 turned on the sirens because they knew what I was about That's to say. That's the Um the the unauthorized um Mork and Mindy story that, ah, that, that you did ah, that you thanks. did with Chris Diamantopoulos with my pal Chris. Um, I love him and, so much. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen it, you should go see it. And Aaron plays Pam Dauber. And there's always so much pressure when you play an actual human being um, as opposed yeah. to just a character. A lot of pressure. And I just thought you were so unselfconscious. I didn't oh, see you. you. I didn't see you worrying, like, am I being like her? You know, and I didn't see a caricature. I didn't see you trying to Im mimic or imitate her. I just saw, I just saw her. I just saw Pam Dauber. And I, I just thought it was a spectacular performance. Oh, thank you. That was such a fun project. And that was when I met Chris for the first time. And I mm. just love working with him so much. Yeah. We were, got to work together again on a short-lived Amazon show, Dangerous Book for Boys, um, like six to five years ago, something like mm -hmm. that. And he's just delightful. Like yeah. his portrayal of Robin Williams was so good. And he plays Spot twins in, 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 in Dangerous Book for Boys. And he's, it was so much fun. Talk about somebody who like really um, does their work and preps and, and then lets it all go and has yeah. fun. And like you said, if it's grounded, you can be big. I mean, you know, you I watched Chris on Silicon Valley and Oh my god, um, I love that you know, part so much. Um so and and you know that have being very experienced with comedy that if it's grounded it can be it can be really big. I'd like to just go back to what you had said about um you know, your kids and and letting letting our kids know and and we should be as actors the same like you're perfect the way you are and I think that's the job is to let your kids now know that that they're just there's only one of them we say it on here you know there's one aaron hayes there's one david allen beige there's one chris rydell and to feel comfortable in your own skin and to let you know as an actor be okay with who you are i was i think i've mentioned it on here before that um i saw kathy bates when i was a young kid on broadway um in um frankie and johnny the Claire de Lune. And, oh, wow. and, and she was so amazing. It just opens with her basically. The, the curtain comes up and she walks across the stage in her own apartment, completely naked, and goes and grabs this robe on the other side of the stage. And oh. I was just like blown away before like she even said anything, you know? And um, it's, you know, there's somebody that, you know, worked on her craft, became an amazing actress, and it didn't matter. You know, it's like yeah. she's getting the jobs, you know, and she's killing. Yeah. Can you um, can you share a, a story of a of a positive experience that you had with um, an, a writer or an actor or a producer or director from one of the, the sets you've been on? Yes. Um, OK. All right. Well, just because it's very fresh in my mind um, on. I, I loved working with Clay Cadis on Christmas Story Christmas and Peter Billingsley. Like there mm. was such a creatively open set being there for three weeks of rehearsal, which at first I was like, why, why do we need three weeks of rehearsal? This isn't really what we did. And then once we got into it, it was like, oh, thank God that we, they created this space for us because Peter was so committed to kind of getting the script exactly right as things came up in rehearsal, they would be like, well, as I was discovering who I wanted this character to be and, and each moment there was so much space for, well, maybe this line isn't quite right, or this would be a great place for Sandy to have a, a little joke, what might ring true or, um, to kind of finesse the scenes and the writer Nick Shank was there as well for the first couple of weeks. Um, so this everyday thing that we went through where we just kind of came in, crafted the script, like, like tightened it up between director and Peter and writer and the cast and got to know each other. Um, I really now hold all those people so dear mm. and, Clay is just so good. I love, I feel like, I love working with directors who were editors or animators. Ah. Like, have you made that? Like, because I've, I've, not, like, 
I've worked with on medical police. Bill Benz was an editor first, and and Clay was an animator. And I find that they just have such a clear vision of what they're going to use, yeah. what they're not going to use, and what the important thing like coverage and shots to get, so that you don't everything is important. Like, and when it's not important, they'll be like, don't stress out about, I'll never be don't in this the portion of the yeah. scene right. in the wide. I'm right. never, I'm going to be on Peter for this phone call. Right. So how you get from here to there, you know, those actor things where you're like, well, wh why would I even cross the room? What am I carrying? What am I doing? They already know it. They're like, uh, -uh. I mean, yes, most directors do that, but I find the animators and animator and editors take it to another level that I really like, I appreciate that crap, that, that prep work and uh, i'll just add i when i was at the sundance lab and um for actors and for directors and i remember i remember ed harris saying directors shouldn't be editing in their heads mm. like like you it's okay to turn to scripty or someone and say do do we did we get all the coverage that i have on my shot list but yeah you, during the filming you want to be present with your actors and present with the crew and you know concentrating on performance that being said once i learned how to edit i feel yeah. like i became a better actor and a better director and a better producer because I like even just editing on iMovie and then I took a course in LA. I remember on Final Cut Pro and learned how to do that, which I've since completely forgotten because it's very complicated. But I learned a lot about why the camera is put where it's put and what the different sizes have to do with my performance. And it's a good point. I, I also love directors who were actors, but I, I really like directors who used to be editors too. And animators, that's a very interesting point. Speaking of, of great experiences with wonderful people, um, this is a leading question. Uh, I'm leading the witness um, uh, in a good way. Someone who has a stellar reputation as being the nicest guy. Um, you were in Bill and Ted Face the Music. And uh, yeah. did you have occasion to interact with Keanu Reeves? And was he in fact as spectacularly kind as he is known to be? Yeah, he was. I mean, I played his wife, so I did interact with him. Um, he was so great to work with. He really was. Um, he like when we were doing the scenes, it was truly like we'd walk and he'd be like, "Should do you think we should be holding hands right now?" Like, <laughs> like yeah, let's hold hands. Um, and was like whatever you you know. He was so open to the conversation about how I thought the scene might work best, how he thought the scene. You know, like it was very it was very collaborative, hmm. which I don't always expect working with people who are very famous or you know who are carrying the movies i'm more like all right i'm here i'm living in your world what would you like from me mm -hmm. uh but like they even and um everybody on that when they were we were already into filming and they were still trying to figure out the very end on how that last the last sequence should work when the song is being every and like they invited us into the workshop session hmm. which they certainly didn't need to do alex and and keanu um but he was i mean he's so nice he's one of the most introverted people i've ever met in my life i've heard that and that too. was a bit of a surprise like he just is not a real chatty guy so if you ask him questions and start conversations he will have nice conversations with you but he's not walking in being like how is everybody what are they? you know like He's a he's a self-contained unit that when mm. back is very kind, lovely, thoughtful person. Mm. I'm so glad yeah. to hear that. I had a feeling yeah. you would, that's how you'd answer. Um, yeah. Mo moving from positive to negative, I, I think Chris Ooh. is going to ask you. <laughs> uh, it's not something, you know, there's no dirt, there's no gossip, but he, I think he's going to ask you a, a very interesting question. Well, th okay. this is something that we, we ask all our guests. If you could share your worst audition story oh uh all actors have one uh, and we yeah. all like to hear them because we it's good for us all to remember <laughs> that we all we all fail we all fall on our face we you know there's bodily functions there's there's being late there's not being prepared there's asshole producers what's yours well okay so mine is more just like embarrassing for me on so many levels perfect it, so <laughs> it was yeah. good what was 
I had an audition and it doesn't make any sense. Like, oh my God, I was, you're so red I right now, it, by the way. I know, I, I know I no I one, you can't laugh. see this, but she's so red right When now. I start to laugh, I get so red. Um, I auditioned for the aviator, like, and to play Ava Gardner. Like the part that was, ended up being Kate Beckinsale. Like, what was wow. I doing in that? First of all, what was I doing in that room? I was no, there was, this was so many years ago. People would be like, Aaron, who? Like even alt comedy fans would be like, Aaron, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, good like agent back then. <laughs> early yeah. enough. And of course the agents are like, you never know. And I'm like, so we do know, don't we? <laughs> like, so I'm watching, oh, I'm watching Ava Gardner movies. I'm doing, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to. And I, you guys, I fucking soaped my eyebrows to try to get big <laughs> eyebrows. Like that is like an old theater technique and a drag queen technique. You soap them down to, and then you draw on what you want. I went shopping for a dress. I tried to curl my hair. I drew my lips a little bigger. It was so dumb. It was so <laughs> overkill. And I'm in the uh, office looking like. How'd it go? It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think I like shit the bed in terms of actually the scenes. Mm. But when I think back on how ridiculous it was, it's like these big movies, they're not looking for like prosthetics and soaped eyebrows. They're just <laughs> looking for like a girl that kind of looks like her to play. <laughs> and they're looking for somebody famous. <laughs> like, it was just like one of those things where I looked back even the next day going, I don't, that was, I can't believe I did that. Like, I can't mm. believe it was like my like Catwoman story, like where it was like, it's too much. It's just too right. much. Yeah, you're right. you're but right. you thought you were going to get the part. That's the, the amazing thing is that you actually like soaping your eyebrows, I I was buying the, the dress. I thought I was you're running. like, I'm, I'm going to get this. Oh, hell yes. Right? And you were committed. Oh, God. And then you it. see who's cast and I'm like, yeah, oh. of course it's Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Like, <laughs> right. who, like, who the offer who the offer was out to before you came oh, in the room. Yeah. Probably. Right. Oh God. Right. Yeah. And we Kate can't let us stop we can't let that stop us as actors, but boy, oh. you know. Um, I'll tell you uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Is there more oh, to the eyebrow? You're touching say, your eyebrows again. Is there more? That. When you walk into a session and you look for and you know that the part is too big and you look at the sign in and there's nobody that you recognize and you're like Oh, cool backup session. Oh, yeah. we—they're floating yeah. offers, yeah. but they have to at least have like two people on tape in case every single person in Hollywood says no. Aaron, I was and it literally is the most demoralizing. Thing in the world. I was literally in a hallway with, and who knows, Chris might have been there. I mean, a bunch of guys that look like us, a bunch of middle-aged white guys in suits to play some character role. I can't remember what it was. Actually, it was a pretty big role, and and we were literally in the hallway, and the door to the casting office was open. There was a second office where another auditioning was uh, audition was happening, and the assistant, who clearly was new, was on the phone very loudly, calling people's agents, and saying, "Yes, oh, can I talk to the agent who's responsible for Ethan Hawke, please? Thank you so much. Yes, I'll hold." And then everyone in the hallway was like turning their heads, like, "What's happening now?" And she was oh like, "Hey, God. yeah, we just wanted to find out about the offer for um, for Ethan and whether he's interested," and and I'm looking at, at my friend saying. That, that that can't be for our role, can it? And they're like, yes, and we're and I'm like, what what role are you here for? He's like, Dr. Harris. I'm like, well, I'm here to play the doctor too. We, yeah, we just want to see if Ethan is interested. You know, Dr. Harris is a really great part, and we, you know, we, the offer's been out to him for a few days, and I'm like, you are kidding me, like literally. And then uh, I remember the casting person coming out, hearing that conversation, looking out, and mortified. closing, mortified, and slowly closing the door, <laughs> and it was like, uh, oh. Okay, I, and not to be pessimistic, but you know, I, I went in. I tried to give a, as good an audition as I could. <laughs> Did uh, you get it? You know, no, uh, you know. I think Ethan Hawke got that part. <laughs> oh my Tell god, us. it's so de it's so demoralizing. It, it so can many be. of those. Well, ones. so let's switch back to our positive selves that we usually <laughs> are. Um, let's wrap up with uh, what we always ask at the end, which is, and you've given us so much, so much to think about, and so many. Uh, words of wisdom, but your best piece of advice, either for an actor who's just starting out, um, or maybe for someone who's just uh, losing faith or, you know, uh, wants to take it to the next level. Best piece of advice. It was the advice that I think my professor gave me in college. 
is that, you know, because getting the job and auditioning for the job is mostly the job, you're going to spend so much of your time auditioning, is that find a way to enjoy that. Like Mm. that is your time. It's that part is yours for those moments. You get to make those choices. I mean, theoretically, we're doing this because we love this. So we ha- we should love that part of it. Like love that process. Mm. Even if it's a self-tape in your attic with your 13-year-old daughter who sounds like she's five. <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> like that is, should be fun. Do it like, and don't beat yourself up about it. That's my, like, do it, feel good, walk away. Like going like, oh, okay, I've got a chance at least today mm. to do this thing that I love. Because we're not, mm. Speaking actor-wise, I mean, a lot of people do other things, so they might write or direct or have things that they can do on their own. We can't do our job on our own. We can't do it. We have to get the job first. So enjoy every moment that you do get to do it. Amen. Very wise. We, we talk about that often, um, that, that, that uh, the job, you know, I mean, if you, if you book two or three guest spots in a year, like, you're working right. for three weeks. You're you're working three weeks out of the year, you know. Yeah. And and there's a there's a lot more than three weeks in a year. So you have to find the passion in in the process. Okay. And, yeah. You know. I actually love an audition room. I do. And like I miss going in and being in there with people mm. yeah. and doing it and having a couple of laughs and getting some notes and getting it, you know, I love a note. Give me a note. Let's do it again. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, like give them a chance to show that you can take a note and change it and do something yeah. different and, and walk out and feel like, all right, those are the best days. I think yeah. whether or not I get the job, if I walk out and feel like I did everything I wanted to do, I had a good time, whether or not it's a drama or a comedy, then I'm like, all right, I, if they want me, they want me. If not, yeah. say love you. Yeah. Yeah. Go in, find a way to love it and find a way to love the whole process, not just booking the jobs. I was going to say our last week's um, guest um, more a couple weeks ago was saying that he was uh, directing a show and they got word that the show had been canceled. Like, it, you oh, know, as he, and he before they started shooting the episode, he was like, well, you know what? This is what we're here for. So let's get yeah. on with it. Yeah. You know, let's yeah. just do this. What a blessing that we're here. And we're working. So, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's about the process. It's not about the end result. Um, end result's nice sometimes. And sometimes it's uh, maybe not what we expect. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, well, know, today the process, today the process was good and the result was very, very nice. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, uh, thanks for having nice. me, guys. Yeah, very nice. nice. To talk to you. Uh, we hope you'll come out of the closet. Um, I hope you'll get out of the crapper. Literally. <laughs> um, and <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for sharing your, your heart and your wisdom and your stories. And um, and I can't wait to see a Christmas story Christmas. I'm very yes, excited. Yes, put on it. your Christmas sweaters and snuggle up with your fam. I look thank forward you guys. to thanks it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Everyone, Aaron Hayes. Yay. And we're out. You and I will connect next time on Confessions of a Working Actor. Well, it's been another great 20 minutes with you, my friend. And you too, brother. It's been fun. Yeah, that was great. Cool. I thought that was awesome. All right, star star that. That was terrific. And we got another great guest coming up next week, so be sure to tune in again to Confessions of a Working Actor. Confessions of a Working Actor.